Hello and welcome everybody to week 10 of our Transformation Dynamics series. Today the topic is all about retention and churn and how to grow your customer base. We will again talk about key strategies and tactics and we will show the impact with some simulation scenarios. So the key question is, what is the impact of retention and churn on the growth that you aspire for your product, your service, your community, whatever you are uh, planning to do in your transformation initiative? And uh, this is a topic where we will also uh, publish a, a short uh, simulation tool, an online simulation tool, so that you can actually work with the scenarios that we're discussing here and in the extended uh, courseware. So um, this is something that is coming about. And uh, as always, uh, this is part of uh, a broader series and a whole portfolio. So besides this free webinar, there uh, there's an online course and also we offer this as an uh, in-house workshop for clients. My name is Thomas Wittig. I am the CEO at Wittigonia and I will be leading you uh, through the session to, again today. So the, the key topic that I would like to um, uh, zoom in on is the retention and churn topic. And <clears throat> the, the, the key question is what are appropriate strategies and tactics, but more importantly, well, what is the feedback structure behind this um, accelerating churn or when you're losing a uh, customer base, etc. And what is driving the dynamic behavior? And oftentimes we, we see a lot of surprises when we work with clients about the, uh, the impact of churn. So, um, it can happen very quickly. And then, uh, you are, um, in the middle of a, a storm of a, a churn crisis. So the question is also, what is the impact on some of the key performance indicators? Um, we will be able to cover a few basic scenarios here in the, the webinar today. And as always, there's more. Uh, material available in the extended uh, course. So this was our roadmap for this um, uh, iteration of the Transformation Dynamics uh, Summer Series. And we arrived at this topic here today. Um, this might not be actually the very last topic. So um, I am planning actually to uh, provide another briefing about supply chain dynamics and maybe one or two uh, special topics, uh, for example, um, how to um, de-risk your projects and uh, with a special focus on schedule and uh, budget risk. But uh, in terms of accelerating and, and let's say uh, developing your installed base, this is uh, what we are discussing today. There was a, a first uh, webinar about the adoption. So you find that also as a replay on our YouTube channel. And then in another um, specialty session, I. Uh, showed some performance scenarios about migration dynamics. So when you you have to move a customer base from a legacy product to a new product, and this uh, actually this episode got a lot of uh, attention in the social media. So you may want to take a look at that. And then uh, last time I talked about how to accelerate adoption in the marketplace. This is of course something that is key, but. Um, uh, the acceleration really doesn't work um, when you um, have a lot of bleeding in, in the installed base and the customer base and you have, um, let's say, an increased churn. So we, that's why we wanted to follow up on this topic. Now, the material is uh, available. The free material will be available on the Wittigonia YouTube channel. And there's also a discussion a group a page on Facebook. Uh, it's named the Dynamics of transformation, as you can see here on the URL on the left-hand side. <clears throat> and the uh, extended material is uh, nicely packaged up in this um, uh, course here. It's um, on our Academy website. So that's academy.wittigonia.com. And then you see it in the nice summer colors. All right, so as a short recap, uh, recap only today. <clears throat> this was our starting point, the areas of transformation dynamics. And we uh, meanwhile covered in uh, two rounds, uh, pretty much all of the sectors. And we arrive again at the, the sector here and the customer 
uh, basis and we talk specifically about customer success. A lot of customer success teams are faced with the question and how to safeguard the customer base and how to make sure that uh, you, you uh, increase the retention and you minimize the churn. And so um, this was um, uh, what we discovered uh, in our journey. So we, we had a deep dive in each one of these areas in the customer base, the market, the project dynamics, the organizational dynamics. And we also explored the uh, interrelationship between these areas. Now, one thing that I um, laid out in one of the, the previous talks was uh, where the failure so some of the most common challenges that we encounter in transformation projects, and that's uh, true for digital and business transformation projects, but also for new ventures and uh, startup initiatives. And it doesn't matter if it's a, let's say, a corporate funded startup initiative or if it's, a, um, let's say, a new bootstrapped uh, startup initiative. And we talked a little bit about uh, churn, and there are several areas where churn can occur. For example, customers leaving during a trial or during the, the contract periods. So when we, for example, have a, a software as a service company or another service or subscription oriented business model, uh, that's of course um, a key uh, area of churn because here we are losing paying customers. So we're losing a, a part of our revenue stream. And of course, um, for some businesses who have a, a renewal of the subscription or service, that's also a very vulnerable time when the, the customers are leaving during the time when the renewal is up. So the question is, what can we do and what is the feedback structure that we um, should be aware of and should be taking a look at? I would like to come back to this feedback structure. This has worked well in, in uh, a couple of the, the previous sessions. And <clears throat> uh, just as a brief recap, um, here we have laid out the customer journey in, in, a, in a generalized way. So we have a, a potential market uh, of, uh, or a market of potential customers. And this market might actually churn away for example, through demographic change. So people leaving a certain age group or age cohort, they're no longer available for this product, or they have tried our product and, you know, uh, right at the beginning decided, okay, this is not for me. So they become fairly unavailable. But a portion of this market is trying the product. So they are adopting the product, they become trial customers. And after a certain trial period, they may buy the product or they decide not to buy it and then they uh, churn away and they um, contribute then to this pool of the lost trial customers. But for those who, who bought the product, they, these are actually the customers that we really would like to, uh, to keep and nurture, uh, but a portion of them might eventually um, go away during their subscription period. And uh, a portion of them uh, will, of course, renew their subscription period. And some of the expired customers, so those who have reached the end of their contract period, might actually not renew. So this is the renewal cycle. And that's the, the very basic feedback structure. <clears throat> and in the, the one of the previous sessions uh, about market growth, um, you want to go back there. And because I explained also how the word of mouth uh, promotion contributes to the adoption process, as well as uh, adoption by sales, marketing, and other areas. So I'm not going uh, into detail in, in this uh, final session here, but uh, I think it's worthwhile to take a look at. And then keep in mind that we cannot uh, we cannot order the customers to jump from here to there. The only thing that we can do is to influence these flows. So when the, the customers are flowing, for example, from being an actual paying customer to um, uh, leaving our customer base. And what I circled here are some of the most important areas that we need to pay attention to because customers can actually leave our customer base in, on different avenues here on this customer journey. So right early on or during the trial period or when they are uh, paying customers during the, in the middle of their subscription or towards the end of the subscription. So that's something we have to be mindful of. And we, of course, have to understand what is actually impacting these flows. So what are the levers that we should take a look at? <clears throat> but also, um, there is an impact on the key performance indicators. Of course, the customers that are 
let's say, not renewing, the first thing that we will notice on our dashboard is that the uh, monthly recurring revenue is going down. Same here, of course, but here is also an impact on the lifetime value because these customers are not renewing. So their lifetime has come to an end and that is decreasing our average lifetime revenue per customer. And likewise here, um, here we have uh, renewal revenue. So when the customers are renewing, they pay uh, uh, again the, the fee or the, the service fee, etc. And here we see an impact, of course, on the conversion rate. So the more customers are leaving our uh, trial, the fewer we have actually uh, being converted. Uh, in other words, they are purchasing our uh, solution. So th these are some of the areas, of course, you might have different uh, dashboards and KPIs, but this is uh, pretty much should be a standard on every dashboard. And again, if you would like to learn more about how to put a dashboard together uh, of key performance indicators, um, I um, offered a whole series, or, or let's say a whole session about this. Um, and you may want to check back on the strategy session where I talked about the key performance indicators and dashboards. Now, what I would like to do now today is to take a look at some of the performance scenarios like we have done in the previous sessions. So we take this, um, uh, let's say, model and abstraction of our um, customer journey, and then we are going to simulate. Again, um, this is something that uh, I have prepared. So this is a dynamic simulation model, uh, which we can use to better understand what is the quantitative change over time. So that's really what the whole transformation dynamics is all about, because we want to understand what is the movement of, let's say, the trial customers or how many customers are adopting over time over the next uh, few quarters or month or even weeks. So the first thing that we need to ask is um, right here at the beginning with this yellow box, our potential market of customers, what is happening here? What is the, the market growth or loss rates? And now what we have um, here in this uh, case study that we are walking uh, through right now is we first have a market which is uh, fairly substantial. It's even growing. But then at some point in time, there's a certain inflection point and the market is going to decline. So that's, of course, important because this is also about timing of our launch. So when are we ready with our solution? Just as an example, if we launch our product here, uh, for example, in, uh, I think this is the month uh, six where we are launching the product, um, we may be able to enjoy the growing market only for a certain period of time until it's actually declining uh, and then um, you, you're vanishing altogether at some period of time. Now, if we would have launched in this um, particular scenario, we, we would have, uh, let's say, uh, contributed to depleting this uh, market and we have a certain adoption here. So our actual customer base is actually fairly low. So that might be, let's say, five to, to seven K customers that we have, even though a lot of customers have tried our solution. That's, of course, not something that we, we would be happy with. And then we have to take a look at the different flow rates, right? So what are the, the customers that uh, expired in our customer base? Have we lost uh, paying subscribers? Uh, what are the, the people who were non-adopters? So that's this red curve right at the beginning. They decided not to uh, take advantage of our solution uh, and so on. So that gives us a fairly good uh, picture here. And there you can see already that we have a whole lot of customers actually uh, leaving our customer base. So naturally now we want to uh, dig into that a little bit more. But also, when we take a look at the key performance indicators, and I'm only looking here at a couple of those. So, for example, here on the left-hand side, I see the revenue. So, we have made uh, quite some, some progress. So, we have a monthly uh, revenue run rate of here up to almost 800K in the month, uh, let's say, 43 or something like that. And so, it's, it's uh, increasing, but it's also declining. And then um, what, what some companies are uh, really keen on looking at is a ratio that's called the lifetime value relative to the customer acquisition cost. And there's one school of thought that says this, this ratio should ideally be 
at or above three. So you should have three three times more lifetime uh, revenue than uh, your customer's acquisition costs at any given point in time. Now here in our case, um, that's actually true. Uh, towards the month 18, we are surpassing this uh, magic threshold and then the business is uh, continuing to growing, but eventually it's also declining here at some point in time. So it's something to keep in mind. Now, the question really is now, uh, what would be the impact if we would start optimizing this scenario? And this is, <clears throat> um, this is the result from this uh, little case study. So uh, I'm going to show you the simulation results right away. And what we have done here is we have, uh, remember this is our uh, original uh, scenario where we have the, the number of customers. And I said, okay, this would be around seven, uh, K customers uh, at a maximum. And through optimization, we have boosted that number up to uh, somewhere around 23K uh, in the month 32 or so. On the right hand side is the, uh, the cum cumulated number of customers we have ever uh, accumulated or ever acquired into our business. And there you can see already it's quite a, a substantial difference. So we have moved the needle up from uh, let's say roughly 15 to 25, 26, 27 K, something like that. Again, this is a case study. And <clears throat> uh, the important uh, thing is what really happened here in this case study. Again, if we take a look at the financial ratios, uh, we have uh, boosted the revenue. And also, um, really interestingly, we have um, made an Im improvement on the this ratio, the magic ratio of lifetime value to customer acquisition costs. So that's not only significantly higher, but we have, uh, let's say, advanced this uh, topic here. And so we have reached the threshold in month uh, 32, uh, sorry, 12, and not in uh, month 18. So that's that's a really desirable improvement. Now, what we have done in this uh, particular case is we have looked at different uh, improvement opportunities. So one was to increase the renewal rate. The other one is to reduce the um, the, the churn of paying subscribers to uh, move from an, let's say, manual renewal to an automatic renewal, which some customers may or may not like. Um, we have uh, driven a conversion uh, project, so that was opening the valve of trial customers to become paying customers. And we have uh, reduced the trial time, which is also an interesting tactic. And here you can see the impact that it has on the final revenue in the month uh, 60, so right at the very end of this performance simulation. And there's quite a difference uh, by tactic. So you can see that they are not uh, equal, so some of them have a different effect. Also, the timing of these uh, tactics is very different. And um, the the picture is even more different when we take a look at lifetime value and customer acquisition cost. And obviously this is driven uh, not only by the revenue side, but also by the cost side. So that tells us that some of these initiatives may be more costly or and have a higher, uh, let's say favorable or unfavorable profit impact than others. Um, which brings us to this picture here. And there you can see that um, in a completely optimized scenario. So this would be the difference. Uh, we would move from a 24 million um, profit impact, accumulated profit, uh, to 72. Uh, that's quite a substantial uh, uh, number. So that tells us that there is uh, really a lot of money in looking at retention and uh, churn. But again, not all of these uh, tactics are equal. Now, the, the really interesting part is if you, if you take a look at these and you add them all up and then you figure out, okay, the impact on the revenue, uh, in this particular case is quite substantial. So it moves the revenue from 25 million to, uh, 27 million. But if we, um, and that's only if we would acquire, sorry, if we would implement these tactics one by one, right? But if we would implement the whole bundle of measures, the whole mix, then we would get an additional benefit of that. And that's a key important point because we need to select the right mix of tactics in order to maximize the 
the outcome. And this is um, uh, in the nature of a complex system so that the uh, you could say that the whole uh, is more than the sum of its parts. That's really true in this case. So, and that's because some of these initiatives actually influence each other. So what we show here is only the individual independent impact. And <clears throat> if we combine them, we get an additional benefit of 24 million. So that brings our optimized revenue all the way up to 76. And there you can see that's already quite a substantial difference. Now, if you actually take a look at the other KPIs, the picture is actually not so clear. For example, looking only at lifetime value, we find that the uh, combined effect is only uh, another 160. So just to read this, uh, and how would we read this chart? Uh, before any optimization, the lifetime, the average lifetime value of a customer would be 824, let's say euros, dollars, or whatever your currency is, right? And after optimization, the lifetime value would be um, uh, pretty much double that. So it would be 1,648. And we have accomplished that through different uh, tactics. The other thing that you can see here is some of these tactics do not have an impact on lifetime value. So they might help us in other areas, but not actually on the lifetime value. Now, again, the combined impact is uh, somewhat lower here compared to the previous example where we looked at the revenue impact. Now, interestingly, when you take now a look at this magic uh, ratio that a lot of people are looking at, lifetime value to customer acquisition cost, you can even find an adverse picture. So the combined impact is actually um, a negative. It's unfavorable. So if we would just um, implement some of these measures here, it would bring our uh, average lifetime value to customer acquisition ratio from five to 25. So that's quite a big jump. But if we would implement all of these initiatives, and some of them have a, an unfavorable effect, it would bring back down this ratio again by uh, six uh, points here or, or six factors. So it would only be 19. Still a very good number, but you, there, there you can see that you have to be really careful what you are looking at and what you are optimizing for. Now, staying with this example, what is what is happening here? So, of course, we need to ask what is driving this strange performance? And <clears throat> when we take a look at the lifetime value and the change over time, you see here that if we only implement the, uh, the automatic renewal, uh, it has quite a substantial uh, different impact than if we would uh, implement the whole bundle. And that is because um, the auto, if we only would put in the automatic renewal, uh, it doesn't contribute uh, so much to the acquisition cost anymore. So you can see that here from this uh, annual cost over time. Uh, in the optimized scenario, we would actually even increase our uh, annual cost uh, also relative to the base scenario. But if we just implement the automatic renewal, it gives us uh, quite a substantial leverage uh, effect here. So that's something we have to keep in mind. Now, uh, again, if we take a look at some other very basic key parameters, so for example, the number of uh, actual customers that we have acquired, we can see that the um, the automatic renewal is giving us uh, a little bit more customers. That's probably because it drives a lot of word of mouth uh, effect here. Um, but uh, it's not actually contributing as much as the the uh, combined bundle of measures that we have identified. So there it would be, let's say, from that perspective, more desirable to implement all of these measures to have a higher share, a higher customer base. It really depends on what you are trying to accomplish and optimize for. And um, also what I'm, I'm showing here is, um, uh, let's say, to contrast, two individual measures. So one is the conversion optimization, which is the red line here, and the other one is the automatic renewal. And there you can see they also have different um, profiles on the on the cost side. So they their impact on the um, the customer acquisition cost and the uh, the cost of renewing customers is very different. All right, if you want to know more about these and also um, play with some different tactics and learn the impact of different tactics, 
Um, it is uh, highly recommended that you take a look at this uh, extended course called Digital and Business Transformation Dynamics. And there you find uh, the simulation tool um, and other tools like um, surveys that should be implemented, et cetera, et cetera. Now, to recap, what should be the work process that you go through on a very high level? Uh, first of all, I would recommend to take a look at the market and figure out do we really have a, a product market fit and what is the actual growth rate of the market is it still growing is it de declining what's driving that secondly take a look at the pain points locate where are the pain points and how bad is really the bleeding now when i'm speaking of bleeding that means that we have a leakage of customers uh, along our customer journey or in our um, uh, installed base in our customer base of paying customers. Then it's of course important to to work on a fix to stop the the, the bleeding and to to determine the impact, and also to work on the fixes uh, uh, with respect to product and process. Because most of the time when we see the churn, it usually has an implication for the product. So we have to take a look at what's wrong with the product. Is it the functionality? the customer engagement, how we communicate, etc., And that's, that's a systematic process that we can take a look at. And then finally, of course, once we have the fix, we can start re-engaging the customer. So I call this the rebound phase, and we can win back the clients. I would not start with re-engaging the clients if you have not implemented the fix. Otherwise, you, you're really um, aggravating your, your customers more and more. So that's really not very helpful. I would rather focus on, uh, implementing the fix. Again, if you want to know more about this detailed step by step process and uh, walk through a case study, uh, the right place for that is the extended course, um, where you find more information and material. All right. Before we go into uh, a short Q and A, uh, today, um, I would like to recap uh, what we talked about. So first of all, addressing the retention and churn provides the potential for growth. Um, now, that should be our first line of defense and our first idea about growth to keep the customers that we have acquired. And uh, as a rule of thumb, it's always less um, expensive to to keep the customers and work on retention than it is to acquire new customers so that's something that has been known for for many years now in the in the business and the in the marketing world secondly um probably your best competitive advantage is agile innovation so if you can out innovate uh, your your peers and and other players in the industries that's important but it's even more important these days to keep up with the uh, let's say the evolving customer expectation and the evolving customer experience. So keeping the innovation pace high is a good insurance against uh, innovation, uh, against uh, retention, uh, sorry, against uh, churn in your customer base. Number four, testing the impact of uh, potential measures before you're implementing them is vital. As we've seen from this example, it can it can be that uh, a bundle of measures is uh, very effective, but it could also mean that it's uh, actually unfavorable. It depends really on what you're trying to accomplish. And the mix of measure is really uh, important. So the little checklist here for you is, uh, I would always recommend to address the churn early as, uh, as early as possible. And uh, in order to do that, it's important to build near uh, real-time insights into your processes and products so that you understand where is the churn occurring and also to help you plan and test performance scenarios. So that's what you actually do then in, in order to figure out, you know, where is this performance scenario going? How much time do we have left? How, how bad is it really? And um, where and when do we need to apply uh, our fixes? Number four, I would highly recommend to implement customer insight surveys for your customer base. And there's more information about this in the extended course, of course. Number five, if you arrive in a crisis mode and uh, let's say you, you're really losing a lot of customers, it's first of all, it's important to uh, 
um, acknowledge what's happening and stop the bleeding. And uh, first of all, to develop the, the fixes before you re-engage any customers. And uh, it, it seems to be easier said than done because I see still see a lot of customers who try to fix the crisis with, um, let's say, marketing communication or PR tactics, uh, while uh, it's really needed to uh, review and revisit the product and the customer journey to figure out what's happening. Number six, um, be careful with your target uh, KPI. So really ask yourself, what are we optimizing for? Are we optimizing for share, for profit, uh, for for retention, for lifetime value, etc.? As we've seen, um, these can be contradictory uh, KPIs. And they could be misleading uh, when you, when you try to uh, let's say optimize for an KPI which doesn't uh, give you the results that you are looking for. Again, more uh, about this topic uh, you can find in our extended module. There's already a, a pretty good set of uh, similar videos like this one about um, market acceleration, organizational dynamics, project dynamics, and so on. So that's. That and more you can find in the online briefing. And <clears throat> with that, uh, I would like to open it again to a short uh, Q&A today. And uh, as always, you can submit your questions live here in the web, uh, uh, webcast. Um, so that is appreciated. For those who signed up to the website, to the webcast, you can also submit it beforehand or in between in the, uh, on the Facebook page that I mentioned. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the questions here. Um, so uh, one question is about um, how to reduce the uh, the churn uh, early on in in the market on the market side. I guess that question refers to this yellow box that we we showed beforehand. Um, so I, I mean, when the the market is moving away. Uh, because of um, changing demographics or changing customer preferences. That's not, there's not much that you can do about that other than, uh, let's say, reposition your company or your product so that, that you actually go back to the drawing board and say, okay, what do we want to offer for our customer group, which is uh, changing, for example. Could be, for example, that you, you have a, a, a product for, let's say, uh, the younger generation from 18 to 24, and that generation is now getting older and they have different interests. So the question is, what what would be your follow-on product or your add-on that you would uh, offer for this uh, kind of target group, right? Um, if, if you have the uh, experience that customers looked at your product and they decided, well, we're still in the market, but it's, it's not for me, for example, then uh, I would go back to, um, the question about product market fit. For, so what are the customers looking for? Uh, what you, should you provide as a core functionality, etc.? Okay, um, then there's a question here. Um, what marketing uh, tactics uh, would you recommend in order to um, increase the, the conversion? Now, again, first of all, keep in mind that um, conversion is uh, is basically moving the customers from the trial to the to the paying customers, right? So, and looking at that, it may or may not have a, a favorable impact. Of course, it's increasing your customer base, but if you have to spend more on on conversion, then actually you have uh, you're getting back in terms of lifetime value then you need to question if that's a really good investment, especially in a more and more maturing market. So when the market is uh, saturating, at some point in time, you might actually want to walk away from the market and then focus on your next generation uh, product. Now, there are several growth tactics or growth hacking uh, tips um, that I'd be happy to put in the extended uh, material. Um, ideally, you focus on something that is... Um, leading to a network effect in your customer base. And again, keep in mind what we talked about beforehand when I explained the dynamics of word of mouth promotion and accelerating growth. That's um, probably the area where you find the, the biggest uh, leverage there. Um, 
and that's that's actually you know word of mouth marketing is is basically low or no cost marketing for you so that that's where you find the biggest lever and also making your your products fairly sticky so some uh, software companies for example do that by offering you to you a, a certain number of uh, let's say free customers that you can manage in your CRM, your free CRM version. And then once you have started uh, populating the CRM, it's fairly difficult to move away from that, uh, from that software. So that's one tactic that you can uh, observe that you can see. Another one is to make sure that um, people are sharing the information. And you, you can see that in, let's say the, the free storage, the free email providers. So these are, um uh, companies who have uh implemented tactics by which when you share uh the product you get actually more um free access to the product or you you get some kind of a discount so that's a key tactic when you want to uh let's say nurture your word of mouth promotion etc that's a safe bet good um yeah, then there's one question here about what is the impact on the payback period? Um, that's actually a very good question. And uh, to be completely honest, um, I have not uh, built that into our simulation models. But um, I think for this particular topic, it would be very good to do that. So I will give it a thought and then uh, publish uh, a blog post and um, and some revised model um, in in the course curriculum there. So you you're welcome to take a look at that. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for today, I would say. So um, there might be a, a couple more sessions that uh, I want to do on the basics. And one is about supply chain dynamics. Um, we have talked about that in different forms when we talk about let's say labor supply chain dynamics. But uh, I would like to also um, make a little bit of an uh, effort there to, to give a different perspective on supply chain dynamics. And the second topic is about uh, schedule risk, which was a key topic that was often discussed in the, um, in the sessions and, and the workshops actually that we held. Now, um, after this round, um, what I'm planning to do is an extended round where we're bringing together the different sectors. So there we will, for example, explore the, uh, the feedback um, relationships and the structures between, for example, the organization and uh, the market adoption and the new product development. So that's where things become uh, even more real world. And uh, I think that's where we will have a lot of uh, fun and interest to explore um, some of these simulation scenarios. So until then, um, I wish you all the, the best for your specific transformation initiative. And I'm looking forward to have you on the next uh, webcast uh, or in one of our workshops. So take a look at our website, see what's uh, scheduled and uh, Yes, looking forward to uh, see you soon. So goodbye.